All right, if you're watching the video asynchronously, I would like for you to right now pause and do this warm up problem. All right, here's what you should have gotten. And real quickly, an announcement you have a quiz coming up on Tuesday. So, in the last lesson, we talked about multiplying conjugate num I'm sorry, complex numbers. I have two complex numbers. This is one complex number. It has both an A and a BI part. And this is another one. And we talked about how we could FOIL to multiply two complex numbers. So I'm going to do that now. The first terms, I also like to think of FOIL as just a double distributive property. So I'm going to distribute negative 3 in, times the other negative 3 is positive 9. Negative 3 times negative 6i, positive 8i, 18i. And then distributing the 6i in gives me negative 18i. And 6i times negative 6i, negative 36i squared. Um, what happens next is that the middle terms drop out because they are the exact same but with different signs, so they cancel. And then I have 9 in the front, and down at the end I have minus 36 times i squared, but we learned the other day to replace i squared with negative 1. And this does not mean subtract 1. This means times negative 1. Because in the step right above, it was 36 times i squared. Now we just have 36 times negative 1. And in fact, it's a negative 36. So multiplying those gives me positive 36 and then the 9 out front, which is 45. So you can use this warm up um, and your notes and homework from the last lesson. What we're about to do is a skill check, and you can keep all that out while you work it. Uh, but first, a few announcements. Um, please leave a private comment on any retakes or work that I haven't updated in Skyward. So you can, okay, so actually, let me rephrase that. For any work I still haven't updated for you, you can do one of two things. You can leave a private comment on the work in the actual assignment in Google Classroom because then Google will give me a notification that you've left a comment and I can go look at it. Or you can email me. Please, when you do that, give me your class period, the assignment title, and any other details you think I need. Um, plus, using your manners are pretty cool. Sometimes emails can come out as rather bossy. I don't think you're trying to be bossy. I mean, maybe you are. I don't know. But um, since we're going to be doing so much emailing this year, it's a good idea to practice writing professional emails and being, you know, like using your punctuation and um, using, you know, your manners like, hello, Miss Funnius, you know, I'm so-and-so, I'm in this period, will you please check this assignment, you know, such and such. It's just nice. I'm not easily offended, but when you go out into the real world and you're working with other people of all different kinds of personality types, you know, just being as professional and informative as possible in an email will get your needs met faster. And then the last announcement, happy pre-Friday, because today is Thursday at the time of recording. So this is the part of the lesson where we're going to have a skill check. If you're working asynchronously and you are just sort of, you can fast forward, you know, um, along the YouTube video, how it gives you those little thumbnails in the bottom while you're fast forwarding. Um, just look for this, you know, big bright blue screen. That was what I put in the instructions in your classroom. So here's the bright blue screen. Um, the skill checks on the next slide. So I want you to work this skill check on a piece of paper with the video paused before you come back to see the work and give yourself a grade. So pause now and work this problem. You can use your warm-up, you can use your notes, and homework from the last lesson. Okay, so here's the work. 
um, go ahead and pause the video, check your work, make any corrections. Remember not to erase your original work. Just write the correct work on the side somewhere. Pause, do that for a moment, and then come back to hear about grading. All right, I will take two forms of this answer for the 100, either the blue part that I highlighted or the black part below that says 37i minus 20. Um, but technically, those are the exact same answers, and the instructions did not say it has to be an A plus BI form. But just be aware of that. If the instructions said that, then I would only be accepting the blue highlighted answer that has a box around it. Um, 95 is for simple mistakes, like um, maybe you just did some math wrong, and so, you know, like, let's say you forgot the 30 was negative, and then you did just 30 plus 10 and got 40 instead of negative 20. Um, that would be a 95, because your procedure was good, you knew exactly how to work the problem, you just made a simple math mistake. Let me tell you some procedure mistakes that you should give yourself an 85 for. Um, one would be not converting I squared to negative one. If you left I squared in your answer, you need to give yourself an 85. Another thing is if you did this part of the problem correctly, you substituted negative one, but you did minus one, like you subtracted it, instead of multiplying it. I want that to be an 85. It does seem like a math, a simple math mistake, but it's also what I'm most concerned with in this lesson is that that's part of the procedure that we're working on in this unit. So I would want that mistake to give you an 85. Um, if you made some combination of procedure mistakes and simple math, a 75, and then give yourself a 65 if you just, you really didn't know what was going on, but you really did try something. And then a zero if you would have just turned this in blank. You know, you would, for students who give me a paper that say IDK on it, right? That does happen sometimes. Um, just give yourself a zero. And then once you take a picture of that assignment, please post it to your Google Classroom. This is the assignment name. I need you to do two things, post a pic there and then write your grade in the private comment, please, which, which grade you gave yourself. And go ahead and pause the video while you finish that, and then you can finish watching the rest of the lesson. All right, let's talk some more about the warm-up. So we had um, this work where we did our FOIL, And then the middle terms dropped off. The I squared became negative one. And we got 45. Notice there was no I's left in this answer at all. We went from having complex numbers to a whole number, a number that's only got a real part. In our skill check, that did not happen. So let me, what was our skill check? Negative five plus two i, negative five, two x. When we did our skill check and foiled, The two middle terms did not drop out. And when I did the I squared is negative one, um, that became positive. So we had our answer was still a complex number. It had both a real part and an imaginary. So what I want you to notice is the pattern in the original problems. 
this original problem did not end up where all the eyes dropped out. But this one did. So I want you to look at that for a moment. Pause your video if you need to and think about what's going on there that would allow for the middle terms to drop out. Pause your video, think about that, and come back. All right, here's what I hope you figured out. In this first problem on the left that I highlighted in yellow, the pattern is that everything in the problem is exactly the same. The negative threes are the same. The six I's are the same. The only thing different is the sign in the middle. It's opposite on each one. When that happens, your middle terms will drop out. And the I squared will drop out because it becomes a negative one. This is a skill that we use when we are rationalizing the denominator in a fraction that has a complex number in the bottom. Just like we don't leave radicals in the bottom of a fraction in the denominator, we also don't leave i's in the denominator. And we're not going to be rationalizing denominators today, but that's one reason why this skill is helpful. Um, so that's what this slide says, that products of complex conjugates allow us to get back to real numbers. For a complex number a plus bi, the complex conjugate is a minus bi. So the a parts are the same, the bi parts are the same. The only thing different is the sign in the middle. So if I were to, so this is a general form. I have a, two conjugates, and if I FOIL them, what happens is what we just talked about. The two middle terms, negative ABI and positive ABI, they drop out, leaving me A squared here, and then minus BI squared, but I squared is negative one. So negative B squared, sorry, this was a B squared up here too. So negative b squared times negative one is positive b squared. So what I've just, just done here is um, uh, derived a formula for you. It's a shortcut rule. And if we were going back to look at the warm up again, here's how I would use the shortcut rule to get the exact same answer. So this is my a plus b i my a minus b. So what's in the position of a here? It's the negative three. What's in the position of b? It's just six. In last the last lesson on Tuesday when I said to give me the b value, I said, what are you multiplying by i? And in this case, well, we don't know if I'm asking you to tell me positive 6i or negative 6i. Like which one, which one do you want? I want just the number part because the way this formula is set up, it already takes into account the different signs on the imaginary part. So you only need the number today and you don't have to worry about when you're Defining your B, you don't have to worry about the sign on the number. You need just the number. For A, though, you do need the sign. And so if we went then to A squared plus B squared, A is negative 3 squared. B is 6 squared. Negative 3 squared means negative 3 times itself or negative 3 times negative 3. So negative times negative is positive. The biggest mistake at that part of the problem would be to give me negative 9 for an answer. And then look, I get 45, just like I did in the warm-up. So we're going to practice this shortcut rule for a bit. 
first we have to decide what the conjugate is for each of these, and then we're going to multiply them together with the shortcut. So we name the conjugate, then find the product. So the conjugate for 2 plus 2 minus i, the only thing that everything stays the same, but the middle term, the middle sign is going to change to plus. Everything else remains. So the 2 remains the same, the i. And so then if we're going to find the product, we could FOIL, and you are welcome to if you don't like the shortcut. If I was using the shortcut, I would just need to know what A is. It's 2. B is whatever number or coefficient is on the I. Well, I don't see a number, but I understand that it's 1. And so then a squared plus b squared, the shortcut rule, gives me 5. For the second problem on the right, first thing you do is find the conjugate. That means everything stays the same except you change the middle sign, the operation. So instead of a plus problem, this is going to become a subtraction problem. That's the only change you make. The negative 1 stays negative 1, and the i rad 5 stays i rad 5. And to find the product of those two things, meaning multiply them together, like I said before, you could FOIL, or you could do a squared plus b squared, where a is the negative 1, and b is the coefficient for i. What are you multiplying i by? Square root of 5. So then a squared is negative 1 squared. b squared is rad 5 squared. That gives me positive 1 plus 5, because square cancels out square root and leaves me 6. All right. On this next slide, we're going to skip the fraction problem and do the same thing we just did on the last slide with just this one thing, the negative 5i. Um, the thing about this one is it's not got an a part to it. So what we're trying to do, a squared plus b squared, right? So if, what do you remember from the last lesson? If it doesn't have an A part, what do we put in its place? Zero, right? So now I have this number, 0 minus 5i. Its conjugate is where just the sign changes. Everything else stays the same. And finding the product of them, which this problem is asking me to do, means just squaring the a value and the b value. So it'll be 0 squared plus 5 squared, which is 20. On this next slide, I want you to pause the video and work this problem by yourself before coming back to tech. So there is your work. Give yourself a clap on the back if you got 53. These next two problems, we can't use this shortcut. And I want you to look at it and pause your video and see if you can figure out why. And to give you a clue, let's first talk about what this squaring this means. It means negative 3 plus i times itself. So pause the video and figure out why we can't use the a squared plus b squared shortcut on this. All right, hopefully you figured out it's because these are not conjugates. 
So we're just going to FOIL. There is another shortcut for this, but I didn't want to bother you with too many shortcuts. And since FOIL works every time, we're just going to skip. So then I'm going to replace the I squared with negative 1. And 9 minus 1 is 8, and then I combine my I. And this last problem is a bit savage. So I do want you to try it by yourself though. So pause the video, try the problem, and don't come back until you have just, you're ready to check or you've just given up, whichever comes first. It's not a shortcut a squared plus b squared because these are not conjugate. So we're gonna FOIL. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times the out last term is minus 5i rad 3. Distributing here gives me another 5 minus 5i rad 3. And then multiplying this times this. Let's talk about that. So when you're multiplying radicals, you multiply the outsides together and you multiply the insides together. So what that will give me here is negative i times negative i, which is positive i squared. That's outside the radical. Inside is 3 times 3, which is 9. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and simplify this next before I move on. Remember that i squared gets replaced with negative 1, and square root of 9 simplifies to 3. And in a bit, I'm going to combine that with 25 right there. But first, we need to talk about um, when you add or subtract radicals, because that's what I need to do with those middle terms. You, the um, insides, stay the same. So the rad 3 doesn't change when you're adding or subtracting. You add or subtract the outside. So in this case, my two middle terms, I have outside negative 5i and negative 5i. Combining those gives me negative 10i. And then I attach it back to the radical 3, which doesn't change. When you add or subtract, the radical stays the same. So now I can combine the 25 with that negative 3 and gets 22 minus 10i rad. And there you go.